Okay, I wanted to show a problem that seemed very simple, uh, but in actuality is pretty complex. And so I chose this one, and it helps to illustrate how important it is to draw out the diagram for what's going on in the problem so that you can figure things out. And so when we look at this problem, it's only two sentences, and it seems pretty simple, but there's a lot going on. So it states, a sprinter who is running a 250 meter race accelerates from rest at 7.5 meters per second squared for 1.2 seconds. So just in that s sentence, there's a lot going on. <laughs> and maintains this speed for the remainder of the race. What is her time for that race? So you might think, oh, you know, here's here's the distance, here's acceleration, and here's time. Um, and that is true, but that's only true for um, one small section of the race. So let me draw out what's what's going on here. All right, so we have the start of the race. Let's say this is the start. And we'll say this is the finish line. And um, we'll go in blue here. And so <coughs> the starter shoots his pistol, and the runner accelerates, accelerates, accelerates for a certain amount of time. We don't know the distance, OK? But we do know some things. We know that the initial velocity equals 0 meters per second. We know that uh, the runner accelerated accelerated at a rate of 7.5 meters per second squared. And she did that for a time of 1.2 seconds. Okay, And it brought her to a certain distance that we don't know. Okay, When she reaches there, she will have reached there and um, reached a final velocity, which we also don't know. But we do know that once she reaches that final velocity, she maintains that same speed until she reaches the finish line. Okay, So we don't know this distance. We also don't know this distance. However, we do know the total distance. So the total distance is 250 meters. Okay. All right. So um, here are some things that we have to find out. Okay. <laughs> and so it's going to take a few, uh, a, a couple of different equations and working out several problems. And so there's different ways you can approach this. Um, let's do, let's find this, the distance of the blue first. Okay. Because we seem to know a lot about this area. Um, so um, we know. Initial velocity, we know initial velocity, we know acceleration, we know time, and we're also trying to find distance. So we'll work with that one. So distance or displacement is equal to the velocity, initial velocity, which is 0, times the time, which is 1.2. And I know in cl class I've kind of been neglecting this, this t, all right, because we've been doing uh, free fall and, and, and drops from from a stationary uh, point um, and, and kind of like this it's, it doesn't really come into play but I should include that um, and then that's going to be multiplied by one half times the acceleration 7.5 times 1.2 squared okay so then when you work out that math you should end up with a distance of 5 Point four meters, and I'm sorry I'm not putting in all of the units that cancel out uh, just because of space and time. All right, so this distances distance is five point four meters. So now we can figure out this other distance, right? Um, that that's two hundred and fifty minus five point four, and that's going to equal two hundred and forty. 4.6 meters. So this is 244.6 meters. 
All right, so um, we know that to get to this point, it took 1.2 seconds. We need to find the time it takes for the yellow portion. So we know the distance now, but we need to know how fast the runner was running for that yellow portion, and that's going to be the final velocity after the start. Okay, so going back to what we know, we know initial velocity, uh, we know the acceleration, and we still know the time. All right, so we're still going to use those the the information right here uh, to find the final velocity. So I'm going to go. Let's change it to yellow. Um, I guess I can use this space here. All right, so final velocity is going to be equal to initial velocity, which is 0, plus 7.5 is the acceleration, times the time, which was 1.2. And your final velocity should be 9 meters per second. So we get 9. 9 meters, sorry about that, 9 meters per second. So we know the velocity, we know the, to uh, the distance, and we're trying to find time. So that's going to be just simply um, a distance equals velocity times time formula. All right, and that's something that you know, should have been covered in you know way back in the beginning of <laughs> of I don't know eighth grade, ninth grade. All right, so distance is going to be two. Let's get rid of that. It's confusing. Um, we'll use this space here: two forty-four point six meters equals the velocity, which is nine meters per second times the time which is the unknown. So we're going to divide both sides by 9. And so we get time is going to equal, let me take a look at my notes, 27.2 um, seconds. Okay, 27 point one seven so I'm going to round that to two so that's the time it took for this yellow section so our answer our final answer is going to be twenty seven point two seconds All right this one which is the time it takes for the yellow and then we're going to add the one point two seconds and so the total time for the race for this sprinter is 28, 28.4 seconds to complete the race. All right, so I know there's a lot of moving parts to it, but I think it, I kind of illustrate um, how important it is to kind of draw some of these things out. And, um, you know, the problems that we're going to tackle in our class are going to be far simpler. But if you're having trouble understanding what to do and where the numbers go, um, you know, I hope this kind of showed you the possibilities and of, of how difficult the problem can be and how, how much better it is if you draw it out.